Coombs was the former governor of the Reserve Bank and this will take care of a few of those other items mentioned there. This is what Coombs said, and I'm going down to the quote. Those who practice central banking often felt themselves to be members of a secret international Freemasonry, a kind of mystery in the medieval sense of a group who possessed some exclusive knowledge or skill, and indeed there's always been, and now we're moving into some of the Masonic Lodge stuff. This is what they say, and they won't say that in a court of law. We shall create and multiply free Masonic lodges in all the countries of the world, absorb into them all who may become or are prominent in public activity, for in these lodges we shall find our principal intelligence office and means of influence. All these lodges we shall bring under one central administration known to us alone and to all others absolutely unknown, which will be composed representatives who will serve to screen the above mentioned administration of masonry and from whom will issue the watchword and program. In these lodges we will tie together the knot which binds all revolutionary. Masonry always perpetrates a revolution because in that they get order out of chaos. And liberal elements, their composition will be made up of all strata of society. Now, any of the Australian banks, actually American banks, yeah. has a whole the power to create money in addition to what you have said about the Federal Reserve specifically? Answer, yes. The fractional reserve system implemented under the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 allows the banking system as a system to create money to expand the money supply. Now that should be your government's ability, not a bank's ability. Mm. Why did you give it to the bank? We didn't buy it. No, your Commonwealth Bank was sold in April 1991. It's a statutory constitutional bank. Why did you let them do that? The authority to expand or contract the money supply by changing reserve requirements given to a private banking system puts our whole money system in fearful jeopardy. Is that happening now? Yes. Because what they're actually saying is, we've got a problem but we think we can prop it up and therefore it's got fixed. No, that's just getting you ready for them to collapse it. By simply saying, well, it collapsed because we couldn't support it. But in actual fact, they wanted it, they built it to collapse it. Why? Because this is what will happen. When Australia can't pay its interest, and that will be called up in one day, they just simply say, internationally we declare Australia bankrupt. That's all of yours. Everything that you put up against that money, unknownst to you, is then under international bankruptcy. Which means they own your property for the next 20 years. Got it? What are you going to do about it? Now this is the ANZ. We've only done the ANZ for this one, for another reason. That's the major shareholders of the ANZ on our last check of the shareholders of the ANZ. All of those are interlocking shareholders. There's a myriad of shareholding tracking and you go into thousands, etc. You'll find them all what you call offshore and disposable which means they can go out of existence on any particular day and do you think they'll give you back your money? Can I ask the question again? Do you think they'll give you back your money? No. Do you think they lost it or they just moved it? Moved it. Now the banks would say, you shouldn't be talking about us because we are really good and representative problem is, do you practice fractional reserve banking? Now here we've got what you call the Australian Government Guarantee Scheme for Large Deposits and Wholesale Funding. Certificate number ANZ L00264, date 12th of the 1st, 2009. Rudd borrowed a lot of money from the ANZ on your behalf. Well, where'd the ANZ get it from? From the shareholders' funds, wasn't it? Are you getting the drift? Did Rudd know that this is how they were doing it? It says, the Commonwealth of Australia hereby certifies that the liabilities the details of which are specified in the annex to this certificate are guaranteed liabilities. You guaranteed the bank liability. So when Rudd stood up and said we'll guarantee all the deposits in the bank, did he? Did he put through any legislation in the Commonwealth Parliament to make that happen? 
The answer is no. But did he give the government guarantee to the bank instead? Yes. There it is there. So this guarantee is going backwards rather than forwards. For the purpose of the deed of guarantee executed on behalf of the Commonwealth of Australia, which takes effect on 28th of November 2008, signed by authorised signature. Now we have Commonwealth of Australia Securities, which in actual fact has a New York office, a New York mailing address, but it's registered in Delaware. Now what does that mean? That if you had a problem in the government with getting that money back, and you have to take a, a legal action in Delaware to get it back. But you've got to be a registered citizen of Delaware to lodge the action. Got it? Annex. Now that's the money, some of the money, only some of the money that's come in from the ANZ to Rudd. That's actually $2 billion. Maturity at 16th of the 1st, 2012 three years away. Then the next one is two billion dollars maturity 16th of 1st 2014 and it's to be cleared in euro clear. There's the debt you have to pay but you have to pay interest on it too. Is the Queen is the head of the most venerable order of the Hospital of St John of Jerusalem. Now I won't mention red words that's a Catholic order of Freemasonry. How can the monarch of England be in a Catholic order if she hasn't breached the 1688 Bill of Rights? Is that reasonable? Did you see a Masonic handshake with her and Rudd? So with that handshake and with that picture, the conclusion is reasonable, isn't it? You have a Masonic monarch. There's your former Governor-General. Now you all know he used to be your Governor here. He's the head of the SAS. He's a highly trained and decorated military soldier. He's not a Yahoo. He's probably a good guy. But once Freemasonry gets hold of their head, they turn him around in the spirit. And here it says, new Governor-General committed Freemasonry. Now he ran your country for a period of time and then he passed the baton to Quinton Bryce. But what's Quinton Bryce? There she is, the current Governor General. Look at the smile of Grandma. Beware of Grandma. Beware of this lady. Because she's a Dame of Grace of the most venerable order of the Hospital of St John of Jerusalem. Catholic Freemasonry. Member, Australian delegation to the United Nations Human Rights Commission Geneva. So she's working the UN program. There's her hubby. He's also a Knight of Justice in the Order of St John of Jerusalem. He's also the Intelligence Officer in the Royal Australian Air Force Reserve. Still accountable to Jeffries. Is this all evidence in a court of law? We re-put the picture. We call it the Masonic Embrace. That's a reasonable picture, isn't it? I think it tells its own story. Now any good barrister or lawyer would stand up and say, I object, remove the evidence from the screen and do not let the jury see it because that's just how people handshake. But is it? You know that a photographer would have had to know that this was going to happen and he was in the correct position. It was a staged picture to tell people what was happening in Australia and England. Because while you sit down, you're not protecting your children. You have to apologise to your children for handing them over to the UN. Section 44, 1. Any person who is under any acknowledgement of allegiance, adherence or adherence to a foreign power. Let me stop there. Old English law used to make the foreign power of England the Vatican. But what I'm saying here, the foreign power that is clearly evident here is the United Nations. The foreign power that is clearly evident here is international Freemasonry. Why? It couldn't have been bred from this country because you are the youngest country in the world. Is that reasonable to say?